like to talk about achievement a great deal. I believe that we are on earth to achieve. We are on earth to bring things to pass. The Bible says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Essentially in the Hebrew, it says Elohim bara. He brought out something out of nothing. By the time he got to verse 26 of chapter 1, he said, let's make man in our own image. So I am of the persuasion that our purpose on earth or essentially who we are or what we are supposed to do is to keep bringing into existence things that have not existed, I mean, existed before. Keep shifting things to the next level. I have this personal opinion of mine that if you're a leader, if you're an individual, what, I mean, for that matter, whatever is committed to your hands, in 30 days, you ought to make it better. I can't work on a project for one month and it's the same. You can't give me a project and in 30 days I give you a report and what you gave to me is what I've given to you. I personally believe something must be wrong with me if I maintain the status quo for more than 30 days. Things ought to be shifting around me. Things ought to be moving forward around me. Things ought to be getting better around me. In other words, I live to achieve. I live to birth new things. I live to bring things into existence. I live to improve on things, okay, from the way they are to the way they could be. And so this morning, I want to show to you what I consider the most important element of achievement. It is the word vision. The most important element of achievement is the word vision. And the moment we start to talk about vision, there are two important dimensions of vision that you must master. The first one is the ability to see beyond the obvious. Vision. The ability to see beyond the obvious. Okay? It means to be sensitive and imaginative. Vision. The ability to see beyond the obvious. It's vision that would make you see just an ordinary person and call him a warrior. Because you can see beyond the obvious. The first day that Jesus met Peter, watch this. The guy's name was Simon. A reed shaken by the wind. First day, Jesus said, you are Peter. I'm not talking about Matthew chapter 16. I'm talking about the first day they met. He said, you are Peter. Jesus saw beyond the obvious. When he saw Nathaniel, he said, you are a true Jew. In whom there is no guile. He saw beyond the obvious. Sometimes when Jesus would be preaching, the Pharisees would be thinking. The Bible said, and Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, listen to this. If you're going to go forward in life, you've got to see beyond the obvious. You've got to be sensitive to people. You've got to be sensitive to situations and circumstances. And you've got to be able to use your imagination. The second dimension of vision is, watch this, a detailed and documented high-resolution image of what you intend to achieve. Somebody needs to write that down. Vision. A detailed and documented high resolution picture or image of what you intend to achieve. Most of us are just living. Most of us just want good things to happen to us. If God wakes you up in the middle of the night like he did Solomon and he asks you, what do you want? Some of us, we need seven days to think about it. You are busy, you, you, you are doing a lot of things, but you don't have a clear, documented and detailed eye resolution image, okay, of what you intend to achieve. But look at what the Bible says in Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 2 to 3, the Amplified Bible. It says, and the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision, engrave it so plainly upon tablets that everyone who passes by may be able to read it. That is, read it easily and quickly as he hastens by. In other words, let it be so clear, let it be so detailed, let it be so high resolution that somebody who does not have time can grasp it in the moment. That does not talk to you about something you just do wishing. This is something you sit down to do. It says, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. It hastens to the end. That is the fulfillment. It will not deceive or disappoint. Though it tarry, wait earnestly for it. Because it will surely come. It will not be behind hand on its appointed day. The message Bible says in verse 2, And God answered, write this, write what you see. Write it out in block letters so that it can be read on the run. Don't just wish it. It says, document it in detail. 
make it so high resolution that it cannot be missed. Are you with me? And when I look at the story of Nehemiah, I see Nehemiah, especially between chapter 1 and chapter 6 of the book of Nehemiah, I mean, ex exhibiting these two dimensions of vision. The ability to see beyond the obvious. The ability to see beyond the surface. You need to understand when people talk to you, they're saying much more than the words they're saying, they're using. When somebody writes you a letter or sends you a mail, what they are trying to say is much more than the black and white that you are reading. Without vision, you would be lost. For example, to the married man, when you ask her, why was the problem? She says, nothing. Don't just go to your dictionary and say, what's the meaning of nothing? It means nothing. No. When a woman says nothing, she, she means press. Ask more until you are committed to the subject I'm about to discuss. I'm not talking. So if you're the kind of person that just, or you go to your boss and say, so how is it? So I say, so it's okay. It's not okay. Do you understand? When you see competent people, they don't use the word okay. They only use the word okay when they don't want to offend you. So when the kind of person that all you listen to is English and you don't listen to emotions, you, you do, you're not sensitive. You know, there's some guys, I, I see the guy on the left hand, I see the lady on the right hand and the guy wants to ask the lady out and without me being a part of the conversation, I know the response. Hello? You know what I teach men? I say more about that on the 18th of October. I, I said, I say, don't ask out a lady who is not asking you out. Pastor, am I going to know? She's not going to say anything. She's not supposed to say anything. If she says anything, be careful. When the lady says, hello, hi, what's this all about? She's too much in a hurry. She doesn't have patience. See, but those very good girls, she's prayed about it. God has spoken to her about it. She knows you're the man. She's just going to keep short. If you want this girl, you've got to pursue it. See, asking is not all that there is to it. There's got to be effort. Do you understand what I'm saying? See, there's a difference between no and, sorry, there's a difference between no for now, no, I'm not yet sure, and no, quit trying. The unfortunate thing is all she says is no. You've got to figure out the rest. But if you're a man with vision, if you can be sensitive, as a matter of fact, if you're very sensitive, you won't even ask in the first place. Okay, let's look at Nehemiah now. In chapter 1 and verse 1 to 4, the Bible says the words of Nehemiah, son of Akali, in the month of Kislev, in the 20th year, while I was in the citadel of Susa, Hanani, one of my brothers, came from Judah with some men, and I questioned them about the Jew, Jewish remnant that survived the exile, and also about Jerusalem. They said to me, now watch this, he was not there. They were coming from Judah, and they were describing to him what they saw or what they have experienced in Judah. It says, they said to me, those who survived the exile and are back in the province are in great trouble and disgrace. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down and its gates have been burned with fire. When I heard these things, I sat down and wept. For days I mourned and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. Watch this. He was in the citadel of Susa. The people that brought the information were not crying. He did not see Jerusalem with his eyes. He only went there with his imagination. Yet he responded better than those who were there because he had the ability to see beyond the obvious. Do you understand what I'm saying? And that's why a lady would wake up from the house and go to work and the moment she steps in the door, a man says, what's wrong with you? And she says, oh, this is happening. And that one, no, sorry, she says nothing. And then the guy says, no, come on, come on. Okay, you know what? Let's go for lunch. And then they go for lunch. She sits down and says, now she thought it was just lunch. And then the guy sits down and says, you know what? Whatever you want to talk about, you're safe with me. I got your back. Talk to me. I actually, my husband has been neglecting me. He's not been doing this. He's not been doing that. He's not been doing this. He's not been doing that. And um, fortunately, the guy happens to be a husband's friend. Okay, so at the close of work, he picks up the phone and says, Fala, how are you? Fala says, fine. So how is everything? No, no, he's on Dundee. So how is your marriage? Everything is okay. We couldn't, have, we couldn't be better. Your wife said that this, no, no. She said that this and this, no, 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 no. And then she comes in the door. And the moment she comes in the door, what was that rubbish you were telling Fred? That I don't have time for you. We said, let's, let's talk about it. You mean I'm not? Well, I've been, I've been trying to tell you all this while, but you never listened to me. Until I said we should talk now. You never said we should talk. What do you mean? And that continues for six months. 
And two years later, she has an affair with Fred. And you're wondering why? Because there's a man who is looking at the picture in front of him, but he cannot see beyond the obvious. See, I wish this was a service where I'm going to teach you how to develop your sensitivity and use your imagination, but that's not what this message is all about. Okay? I said, but you've got to be imaginative. You've got to be able to use your mind. You've got to be able to sense what's going on around you. Let me give you another illustration. The Bible said unto Abraham, go to one of the mountains of Moriah and sacrifice your son. He said, on one of the mountains that I would show you. One of the mountains in Moriah that I would show you. The Bible said three days later, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place from afar. God said nothing for three days, yet Abraham located the place. How? It was in Moriah. Yes, that's a general geographical area. But it was in the proximity of the mountain. Why? Because it was a sensitive man. You've got to learn to read seasons. You've got to learn to read opportunities. He was in Susa, but he could sense what was happening so much that he wept at a place he did not get to. And he began to pray. Time will not permit us to read all that he said in prayer. He began to pray. But the second dimension of vision is for you to say, you know what? This is what I want to achieve. And for you to be able to define it in detail so that other people can see it and walk on it with you. Chapter 2 and verse 17. He says, then I said to them, you see the trouble we are in. Jerusalem lies in ruins and its gates have been burned with fire. Come, let us rebuild the walls of Jerusalem and we will no longer be in disgrace. I also told them about the gracious hand of my God upon me and what the king had said to me. They replied, let us start rebuilding. So they began this good work. Yet for years, the same people were there. Some other persons left them, went to Susa to describe the situation to Nehemiah. But when a, lady, a leader showed up on the scene and showed them a picture of possibility, detailed, documented, high resolution, the same people that were in disgrace, the same people that had given up, said, let's do what? Let's build. And in 52 days, they completed the project. Because there was a man who had vision. Listen to me. If you are going to be a man or a woman of achievement, if you are going to go far, you've got to be a person of vision. You've got to be able to know what you want and go for it. Yeah.